This is a week that farmers, ranchers, and agriculture producers in my state of Kansas have long awaited. The House Agriculture Committee will finally mark up a five-year farm bill. I want to start by saying thank you to Chairman G.T. Thompson for leading the committee in developing a bipartisan, comprehensive, fiscally conservative farm bill that gives our farmers, ranchers, and agriculture producers the certainty they deserve. Around this time last year, the chairman and I hosted a farm bill listening session next to a wheat field in my district. We heard from 150 Kansans about their priorities for a farm bill. They were clear. They need a farm bill that gives them certainty as they work day in and day out to feed, clothe, and fuel the world. The Farm, Food, and National Security Act does just that. This farm bill strengthens the farm safety net and protects crop insurance. Agriculture producers in Kansas understand firsthand how important that is. In February of 2021, Kansas had 13 consecutive days of below freezing temperatures, which is a 40-year record. Our producers worked around the clock to protect their cattle and ensure they survived. Just last summer, drought and market conditions in Kansas caused producers to abandon the highest number of acres of wheat since World War I. Wheat farmers have seen a 35 percent decrease in production in the last year as a result. Uh, Madam Speaker, the reality is Mother Nature is a very difficult business partner. One bad crop year could put the livelihood of our producers and their families at risk. This farm bill gives these hardworking individuals more certainty by strengthening the farm safety net, adjusting reference prices, and modernizing the livestock indemnity program, dairy supports, and conservation reserve program. The committee's farm bill also maintains American food independence and invests tax dollars in places we can see a return on those dollars. America is the freest country in the world, in part because we have never had to rely on another country to feed us. At the heart of that independence is agriculture research and innovation. The Big First is home to some of the crown jewels of the Animal Health Corridor, Kansas State University, and the National Bio and Agri-Fence Facility. These institutions give the nation a scientific hub of world-renowned research. Kansas State University is conducting groundbreaking research into areas, including new heat-tolerant wheat varieties and higher-yielding sorghum. The U.S. Department of Agriculture's state-of-the-art InBath facility in Manhattan will conduct research into serious animal diseases threats to be an important backstop in protecting our nation's food supply. This work and America's continued ability to feed ourselves for generations to come depend on a five-year farm bill that prioritizes food security as national security. Uh, Madam Speaker, this farm bill makes robust investments in the market access program and foreign market development programs that ensure our American producers remain in the international marketplace. It proactively addresses issues like deferred maintenance costs at land-grant institutions and the country's veterinarian shortage before that problem gets even worse. I've been to this floor nearly 30 times to push for my priorities in this farm bill, to protect and strengthen crop insurance, to promote trade programs that help America remain competitive and secure, conduct rigorous oversight of the executive branch to fight big government overreach, and invest in agriculture research at America's land-grant universities. I'm pleased that the farm Food and National Security Act does just that. We need to pass a five-year fiscally conservative farm bill long enough that's long enough to provide certainty and short enough for Congress to respond to market changes. Farm bills feed every corner of the nation from New England to the islands of Hawaii, both our coast down to the Gulf and even the heartland of this country, including Kansas. American agriculture producers and consumers are counting on it. The legislation we mark up this week will have ripple effects for years to come. This body and Congress must use this legislation to address the concerns we've all heard over the last several years. When we kicked off our Farm Bill listening session last year, there were three combines parked behind us, John Deere, Case, and Gleaner. When you grow up on a farm, you're born into loyalty to one of these trusted American brands. They have different styles and features, but they are all designed to do the same thing, harvest. Our listening session that day and the bill that House Agriculture Committee marks up this week are no different. We all have different priorities and backgrounds, but we are all here to do the same thing. Harvest, work hard, and effectively turn out a product, the Farm Bill. America's farmers, ranchers, and ag producers deserve it. America's food and national security depend on it, and Congress must deliver it. This Farm Bill is something our ag community can be proud of. It puts dollars in places where Americans can see a good return on their investment. It tightens budgets and reigns in reckless spending that doesn't serve taxpayers. Most importantly, this bill ensures that American farmers, ranchers, and ag producers can continue to keep us all fuel, fueled, fed, and clothed. The Farm, Feud, and National Security Act is the first step in the right direction, and I look forward to this week's markup. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I yield back.